Harry Potter. <laughs> you know, just another Wednesday. <laughs> Hi guys, we are Recreate. Well, first of all, if you haven't seen this, I don't know how. But Pat McGrath, what was the name of the fashion show? Maison Margiela. Look at you. Pat McGrath did the makeup for the... Maison Margiela. Fashion show. <laughs> That's like one of those, it's like duped and it's a computer voice and it's like Maison Margiela. Wait, wait. Yeah. Pat McGrath did the makeup for the... Maison Margiela. Show. <laughs> Or you're the Anne Hathaway to my Meryl Streep, like whispering in my ear. Yeah. Maison Marcello. Yeah. Maison Marcello. Um, I said that wrong. And it took over the internet because it has by far been one of the most simple yet innovative makeup things to happen in what feels like 10 years. Yeah. So we wanted to recreate it, but like recreate it. Go the extra mile because we're seeing people like, do it. Personally, uh, this is my wheelhouse. I love special effects stuff. You're very good at special effects as well. And we both like finished each other's sentences when we were seeing other people's things, recreations of like certain things they were doing that they're like, that's shattering the illusion a little bit, which we'll explain when yes, we yeah go absolutely. into it. As well as thank you to Erin Parsons. We talk about her all the time. She is a goddess because I think she debunked exactly how the porcelain makeup was done, which we have everything to create it the way she did. So we're gonna get started. And we covered our brows, which was super simple for us. We yeah. did not have trouble, Easy. we didn't hate it. No. Yeah, I hate covering my brows. We were saying if I was a drag queen, mama, I- Shaved. I would take a bath in there. Yeah, like, I would uh, literally. Never. So we are gonna start with foundation, if you will, from here up and bring you through the process. Yeah. So let's dive in. <laughs> <laughs> we always joke around that like, Special effects makeup, but when you want it to be glam, meaning like smooth and nice, mm -hmm. is not the gig. No. Like, so I used um, on my forehead a combination of the Makeup Forever White Stick and the Hourglass Foundation Stick in Blanc. And you used... I used the Rem Beauty Foundation in Fair One Neutral, so this was the lightest shade. And I Which good like for them for going that light. I know. Yeah, and this it's not really yellow. Good. No, oh, which it's is lovely. perfectly neutral. That's why I like saw this and I was like, this is this is the gig. Yeah. Now for eyeshadow, we aren't copying the looks exactly. We're like kind of just referencing the placement and doing our own color stories. Because as you can tell behind me, I'm a psychopath. So I did recreate um, the fashions for us. So there's going to be a full reveal at the end. We're going to follow the placement, but we did come up with our own color stories. Yeah. So I'm going in from the Pat McGrath palette, this kind of rosy neutral transition. And and then I'm gonna take the Patrick Ta, and this is the Major Dimensions 3 in the shade Needed, and it's like that warm kind of brown. Lovely. So I'm gonna take that. And my best advice for blending out eyeshadow over a covered brow is, mama, we want to stamp. The more we move and swipe, it's gonna aggravate the texture. <laughs> We have our very first color on, and then I, on a much more pinched small brush, just deepened up below it, that fake crease to almost make like a cut crease effect with just something that's like slightly, a little bit more brown. I did the same thing. So that first color that I took, I went to the next shade darker, started to deepen up the crease a little bit. So then I just kind of added that little pocket more. Yeah. So I have a floating crease right now. Ooh, Ooh floating. <laughs> floating. Uh, and now we are gonna go in with our kind of, it's like almost like our first shade of mm -hmm. our halo eye. At least I'm doing a halo. Yeah, okay. I'm doing a similar halo eye. Okay, yeah. actually the best color was in this Lunar Beauty blush palette. It was this uh, rose skyline. And then I'm taking the shade Willow out of the Natasha Denona Yucca palette. Mm. So this like kind of like teal, green moment. I'm just gonna pack this on the inner, well, both of us are gonna pack our colors on the inner and outer half of the eye. I feel like my issue is that I didn't go low enough on my crease, so I'm gonna pack You could this. bring your brown down. Uh -huh. Yeah, bring her down. You normally always put your brown down. <laughs> yeah, the brown goes down. Oh yeah. My brown eye. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so I'm just bringing down that brown from before. Oh, see that? Now that's something nice. <laughs> bringing that down a little it's bit more. good to do something nice for Stephanie on her birthday. <laughs> Oh, wow. Ooh. Nice. Wow. Look at me saying that with, like this. Nice. Ooh. Oh, look. What another glorious morning. No, this is giving fucking it clown and Winifred Sanderson at once. So we have everything blended, pretty much the mattes on mm -hmm. the lid. As I said, I did the Lunar Beauty and then I just took a darker, richer, like, burgundy brown and really deepened up this cut crease because I'm nuts. I did the same thing with uh, the Michaela part two palette with the shade, the commons to deepen up the green a little bit like that 
so I get that darker teal. Cut the crease a little bit with like a light concealer so it's like a little more in the center. Yes, I use the new Trixie white eyeliner just to give me like a little bit of brightness in the yeah, center. That's good. And now I think we're gonna basically, it's gonna be the star of the show color, mm -hmm. but not overwhelming. Like we don't yeah. want it to be too pigmented. We're almost yeah. like more toppery. So I'm using this one from the Pat McGrath Mothership 9. Yes. And then I'm gonna take Pat McGrath as well. I think this is Mothership, which one is this? Mother. Mother. Okay, so I'm using the Mothership 5 palette and I'm using this top shade up here. It almost has like a green, like seashell blue yes. iridescence. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use that in like the center of my lid. All right. Okay. Girl. Uh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Look wow. at that monitor. <laughs> look at me. Girl. Oh my <laughs> God. Wow. This is gorge. And then based on our reference photo, there isn't much eyeliner on top, if at all, which I don't really want to cover mine. So I'm going to use the House Labs and we're just going to tight line and do mascara. I'm going to try the Rare Beauty to tight line. There's something about like tight lining your own eyes is so... I hate it. Especially with contacts. Just look, guys, this is why I say all the time, like mature skin doing the tight line. Look at the difference in my eyes already, just with that anchor of that. And I don't even have mascara on. Yeah, deeper. Rich. Like, look at that, wow. right? Isn't it? It's so yeah. subtle, but I it's just- I see it just... more on you where like on me, I'm like, I kind of see it. Yeah. I don't know why I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna use the Give Beauty Mascara. 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 I'm gonna use the highly rated from Milani. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's beautiful. Like the brush has the grip. I gotta, it's yeah. like, so for brows, I, <laughs> you, you can grab was, your brush. I was like. <laughs> so for brows, I wanted to use powder because I felt like a pencil, like I, we don't want to be draggy draggy Agre over the brows. Us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not draggy draggy. We already glued our brows down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I guess we do want to be draggy draggy, but yeah. we don't want to draggy draggy. You don't want it to skip. Ex yes, I don't oh, want I it to aggravate, like drag on top of our glue. I thought down you meant brows. you didn't want to do drag. <laughs> I said no, too late. Yeah, we are. This is the Groundwork Defining Neutrals. Great if you're a makeup artist. It has a coinciding cream and powder in all these color stories, and you can use it for contouring brows, etc., etc. So I felt like this was a great palette, especially for blonde, like to go more taupey. This is going to be scary. So we're going to use this, the coolest in stone. We'll show you a little bit of this process, but like I said, it's probably going <laughs> to in us, at least me, because I'm the shakiest person alive, huffing and puffing and trying to get this perfect. I think placement is like the scariest oh, thing. Oh right God, now. girl, I know. Because I'm looking like if this is my crease. Is this my hair? Yeah, like how girl, arched. I know. And how far up, like that's far up. I know. Mama. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a lighter shade and almost sketch out where I'm gonna want this mm -hmm. with the light, 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 almost peach in here. A lot of the ones she did, they have a very, so they come like this and then they have a very straight tail. It's not a big curve down. I'm just nervous. <laughs> it's in the hands of a higher power. <laughs> Are you getting pigment? Not as much as I would like. I'm gonna take the Maybe cream. the cream? I just don't know. I like, ooh, I love that. Cause if I look down. <laughs> yeah, you wanna, you wanna give like. If you're giving like you wanna, wise, yeah. like when I'm looking down, I want it to sculpt with mm -hmm. the eyeshadow. So it looks like my brows were there before I mm -hmm. went in. Is the pigment on this aggravating you? It is pissing me off. Like, I'm like, come on. Back in the browser, Phil. <laughs> I had to. Okay, our brows are on. Uh, yeah. That was stressful. Doing brows yeah. without a guideline. Yeah, I was saying my brows Not are fine. giving demure and Kevin's are giving Disney villain. Yeah. We're ready for foundation? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. We're here. So I'm just gonna take the Rem Beauty again that I used up here. Should I use that too? Because are you okay? I, I know. <laughs> Should I use that too? Because I, I don't know if I want to use creams. No, 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 no. Cream, no, right? No. Cream okay. not the move. For the first time ever too, I'm not going to take it with a brush because I feel like I want to build this. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the best way to do that is probably with a sponge at this point. Foundation color though is really perfect Very, for this Oh my look. God, good for her for making it this light. Because I will say too, like you said before, people that aren't going as light to do the porcelain doll Exactly. Look. I'm not saying go this light if you have like medium to deep skin. <laughs> I feel like that's what Pat McGrath's team yes. did. And then when I see people doing it, not that, you know, there's no rules. We were also saying as well, a lot of the, the biggest thing we were seeing uh, other people do that was kind of shattering the illusion for us is 
they were doing their makeup, like the technique of like highlight, contour, etc., as though they would normally do it. And a porcelain doll doesn't have contour. And they don't, using highlighter, like powder highlighter, the latex is what's giving you all the shine. So if you have something underneath that has a glow or a shimmer to it, other than the eyes, it's gonna be competing with the latex shine, and it's not gonna look like a porcelain doll, it's because it's giving two layers of shine, which yeah. was- Yeah, because I said too, that with the highlighter, your highlighter is at like an angle, and then everything is already wet. So mm -hmm. it's like when the light was catching the cheekbone reflective, let's say at like a 45 degree angle, you have like highlighter beaming up. So then it's like, where are you supposed to What am I this? seeing the shine from? Yeah. yeah. And it so ends up looking a little messy to me rather than. Yeah. Cause that's the whole point of this makeup is to make it look like your skin is like super glassy and yes. full. And, but we look very flat right now. And then once we do the airbrush. Exactly. Oh my God. Uh, I feel like the camera can't handle how white we are. Fair. This Aryan Beauty slaps. Like, I love good it. for that. Like this is a foundation shade, but and it's not white. Like this no. isn't like the house labs white. No, and it's like compare and like we use this as our concealer. Yes. And like even with that, I'm like I know. living for this. We think it's best to place the blush before the bottom eyeshadow because it looks like it's layered underneath. I'm going to do a yellow, which I'm super, I think is gonna go really nice with this like pink and mauve. How fitting. I'm gonna go in with Cool Mom. This was the Pro Fusion uh, Mean Girls palette and I still love it. Like Cool Mom. Cool Mom. I think I'm gonna take probably a little bit of Cool Mom and then mm -hmm. a little bit of um, Thang. Yeah. I'm gonna take <laughs> <laughs> you said that too casually. <laughs> Thang. Thang. T H A N G. Thang. Oh. Yeah. Girl. Yes, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just kind of like nervous. Girl, I'm getting Girl, nervous. how old are you? I'm getting nervous. I liked the one photo, how it almost wrapped up and then the yellow was almost underneath. Yeah, it like connects literally to almost the outside of the eye. Because again, what we were saying with that no highlighter look, there's there's no highlighter, so they're using these blushes in a very liberal way because the dimension and the texture and the shine is coming from the porcelain effect. Yeah. And the good thing about this is if your blush, I mean, it's the same as normal makeup. If, you're, if you don't love your blush placement, we can just use a white, which I'm using the shivering white powder because I can't find my one size in white, but then we're also using this, which is fair zero. And you could use that to really blend out the edges. Wow. Thang, who would have known? Thang, 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 thang. I don't remember that from Mean Girls, thang. I don't either. Like, what is that? What is that referencing? Wow, yeah, thang was the move. It's like an antique yellow. Yes. That's the best way I'm going to describe it, because in the pan, it looks it very looks very orange. tan, yeah. That really makes a huge difference. Like, it pulls more yellow yeah. than you think. I might be into yellow blush. I know. Should okay, we do I yellow really, blush forever? I think I'm going to try yellow blush because you remember when NYX had the shade golden? It was a matte yellow. Yeah. I understand now because I looked at that and I was like, who's wearing this? Yes. I am not kidding. I think yellow blush is a serve. There was a trend for a little bit. It was like daffodil makeup or something. Yes, I remember. And it was like yellow blush, yellow lip, yellow yeah. this. It was almost like the the uh, latte makeup. Or yes. Whatever. So I'm kind of interested. I really want to try yellow blush now on like my normal skin tone. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of mirror what I did on top. So I'm gonna dip into in this Looney Tunes palette just to give me a little gradients. This pinky kind of rosy right there. It's a little softer. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna take the Michaela palette, the commons color. So we were saying most of the very bold shimmers actually in this look like that are really popping when the light hits it are what you would think would be the inner and outer corner, but it was actually on the bottom half rather than the top. So it was more in this like where if you had two tears falling on the inside or outside, it was down there. There actually is quite a bit of shadow actually like- In like the inner and portion. down, like how you would would use a highlighter to, let's see. Yeah, because it looks like that's a lot of, of yeah. where the shimmer is. That's right? what I mean. So you want that base. So I'm, yeah. imagine we're taking like a powder highlighter and highlighting the inner corner, but I'm actually doing that with this first matte I'm using because now when we put a really intense rose shimmer on top of that, it's gonna have a base and see how that almost gives, ooh, you know what that gives? Bringing it in like that, it gives that Kate Moss. Like, um, Remember the black Kevin and white Kevin Aquan? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I really love artistic makeup like this. I know. Like, that's just, ooh, I just, I love this. Gonna go back into that Lunar Beauty blush shade and Rose Skyline. Deepen this up a little bit. We took the matte down pretty far because I, I was telling Kevin, I was like, I love the inspiration photo we're both going off of because the placement of darkness and then actually the shimmers down in here, out here, 
and in here mimics like that very old, like the time period this is kind of hearkening to that like depression, sadness kind of vibe. So I took the same thing I did on my lid from the Pat McGrath palette and dipped in with a very fine brush. And we are stamping that on top of the mats we brought down here. Yeah, and I did the Mothership 5, that like top like sea glass color. Mm -hmm. So I took this like, so it's right all in here and then right out here. All right, we're back with lips. I'm gonna be a little crazy and I'm gonna dip into Sympathetic. And the way this is kind of like very subtly underneath the eventual black. So I want it to like kiss out from behind the black. I'm gonna take the Nabla lipstick in the shade Berry Call, and I'm just gonna take that with a detailing brush and then just start to feather it in, because it goes from like a nude to the berry, all like, like the popsicle lip almost. Alrighty, my pink is blended out. Kevin's red is blended out. Yep, blended out. I took actually just leftover white concealer from before and popped it on the edges and then like feathered it in. Nice. With that same like detailing brush and it literally ombre the color perfectly. And Gorge. Just like, yeah. Now I'm taking the House Labs eye paint in black because this shit is unbelievable. So I'm basically gonna like line the top borders and just feather it down a centimeter. So yeah, say we brought it here and then it does come down all the way, but then we want it to feather off here and here. And that's why we put the pink down first so that the pink is like kissing out of the sides. Mama's lips are dry. Why am I fucking around? Always gotta touch it. <laughs> Always gotta touch it when I'm bored. <laughs> Take that out of context. Yeah. I don't think we have anything left other than the spritz. I am, the closer we get. We're bugging out. Yeah, cause we put a lot of work into this makeup and if this messes it up, we can't walk you through the process of doing it because it's a lot of spraying and it's a lot of waiting. We'll tell you what the products are. So this is what Erin Parsons kind of discovered. It's called the Freeman's. It's the Freeman's uh, Cucumber Peel Off Gel Mask. Yes. It's a little bit of that and it is most Mostly water, like I would say, what, 90, 10? 90% water, 10% the mask. Really mix it up. Um, and then you could either airbrush it on. We were having trouble with the airbrush machine, so we actually got the idea to put the mixture in an empty setting spray bottle to get the mist. Yeah. So yeah. it's gonna be a learning process. We'll obviously, maybe with a little music interlude, show you us spraying ourselves. It's gonna smash cut from that to us crying because it messed up our makeup, or smash cut to us in in full costumes looking amazing. Girl. Girl. If this don't turn out. So wish us luck. Here we go.